Alrighty, um, I had several students ask me about how do I improve on my color, the wonderful world of color. And I'm always a little hesitant to just uh, answer in a really quick um, answer because it's very complex. And I have such a strong passion for color that, um, you know, I didn't want to just say, oh yeah, take a couple of color, color theory classes and all that. I actually worked as a color stylist in a few jobs, and a lot of the color that I did at Disney um, was was based on my background in studying uh, ancient cultures and things like that. But um, to first off, um, this is a great way to start your inspiration world is uh, something called Pinterest. Some of you probably already have one of these, but it's a way to gather images that inspire you. And the great thing about it is you can put it in these different kind of binders, okay? So um, some of the binders might be like, here's something on robots or something on an actor that I really like. Um, or eyes. I have something here on eyes, which has an amazing use uh, of color. Let's look at that for a second. Basically, you have um, nature, right? This is real photographs images from nature so real life nature can give you a, a wonderful resource and uh, ideas for different types of color schemes and things um, basically the whole essence of color is design you know how much red versus how much blue versus how much yellow you know that's the design this is the design that the photographer came up with so we're all using the exact same colors obviously you know we've got the same colors some artists have a great sense of color and some artists um, are not using color very well so what you want to do is slowly nurture your um, your taste and build your color uh, palette and the way to, one way to do that and this is the simplest way I think is to first just start gathering artwork that you really like, you know, don't, you know, you don't have to judge yourself. You might just say, ah, I just really like that artwork, you know, like, for instance, I personally like this type of color, you know, myself, you might not like this, but uh, I look at this and I just love the color, you know, it's this old rust bucket, but how he's able to sneak in these bright, almost primary colors is uh, incredible. We have this color image against this kind of muted gray-blue background. You know, this is a beautiful sense of color. So anyway, you can first thing you can do is start gathering images that inspire you. I have to say, when I was in college, <clears throat> my color sense was so bad that my teachers forbid me from using color. <laughs> Um, they said, yeah, your color is so tasteless that we don't even want to see it. So what they did is they forced me to work in black and white for pretty much the first four years. And what I did is um, I started working on my design, my patterns, my graphics, all that type of stuff in black and white. And you learn design. That's the most important thing. And then after four years of a really you know, as much as I could, trying to learn design uh, in black and white, when I shifted over to color, everything just kind of fell into place, you know, my color was 10 times as good. So working in black and white is going to improve your color more than working in color. And here's a perfect example. We have uh, uh, Ian Miller, okay? This is a very colorful image. He's using his sense of graphics to create something that's very colorful, very lively, and yet it's in black and white. So when you start understanding uh, graphics through black and white, your, 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 um, your graphics and design in black and white, you're kind of primed and ready for color. And what I usually do is I encourage people to continue to work in black and white and then that's incredible and then when you feel like there's a, a reason for color like there's a story element or there's a moment 
start sneaking in a little bit of color at a time. You know, it could be a little red eye or something like that. And slowly ease your way into color. If you have Photoshop, Photoshop is the best thing in the world and the worst thing in the world when it comes to color. Because you have all the colors in the rainbow. It's very easy to press the yellow button, the red button, and the green button, and the purple button. And you've got everything bright and everything is fighting against one another. And it becomes just a big um, conflict. So first thing, first thing I would suggest, if you have any trouble at all with color, don't use color. Um, try to work in black and white and try to really work your graphics, work your language, look at different artists that use different types of markings and practice that and play with that, play with pattern. I always say Tim Burton is the most colorful black and white artist around. Because if you look at his black and white stuff, you know, with the stripes and stuff, it has this sense of color and whimsicalness and yet it's black and white, you know. So anyway, so that's the first thing. Um, is not to use color. The second thing, and this is the secret to color, right here. This is the secret, is there's different types of color. There's, um, uh, I call it cheesy color, which is just, you know, just bad color, of course. And then there's tasteful color. And tasteful color is something that you can get from ancient cultures, you know. Ancient cultures are going to give you this wonderful sense of color. Now, it's up to you, whatever color you want to use, of course. But if you ever want to work as a colorist, or if you ever want to, you know, get hired as someone who does color styling, um, you're going to want to have, a, you know, kind of a refined, tasteful uh, use of color. I think culture is the most tasteful color um, that you can find. You know, look at all this stuff. It's just... Oh my God, this is absolutely breathtaking. Yeah, look at this. It's very tasteful, organized uh, use of color. Just a little bit of blue, you know? And you can take a piece of culture, cultural image, and use that as a guide for coloring anything in your, in your artwork, you know? This wasn't something that I did because I wanted to. It was because my my art teacher dragged us to the museum and forced us to look at culture. Of course, when I started looking at it, I was like, wow, this is obviously beautiful, obviously. But, but then I started thinking, well, how can I use this for my own artwork? And when I started implementing culture into my color work, it just kind of exploded. And that's honestly how I got to work at Disney. It wasn't because of my great drawing skills or anything. It was because of the culture. So if you look at here... Look how much yellow there is. A tiny hint of yellow here. It's not even yellow, it's a greenish yellow. It's these harsh, heavy... Here we've got very heavy blue. Or I'm sorry, heavy red, right? But the whole thing is not red, green, blue, purple, orange, you know. It's predominantly... The, the most predominant color here is red. Now, can I explain where this came from? I have no idea. I don't... I, I don't claim to be an expert in culture, but I can at least point you in that direction in saying, uh, if you're looking for a great color, this is a place to look, I would say. It's absolutely gorgeous. All of it. All of it. You know, look at that face. Incredible. Um, we wouldn't think of painting a person's face red. And if you did, and then you had his skin green, and you had purple jewelry, it would look terrible, right? So we have this intense red against these very muted, dark, dark, dark brown colors. It's, uh, it's, it deals with color proportion. I started getting, I was always into culture for years and years, but I started using Pinterest to gather color just a few months ago and I was blown away by the quality of imagery you can find these high resolution images look at this color again very subtle you know it does have red it has green it has brown but it's very subtle very tastefully chosen I assume it's because culture doesn't pop up like pop art. Like, okay, I have an idea. Boop, there it is. It's something that evolves over hundreds 
sometimes thousands of years. Right? Oh, God, I love this. Look at that. And when you really start analyzing, which you can do too, if you're really looking at it and you still feel like, oh, that's red and that's, you know, you start thinking that's yellow or that's not really yellow, that's a, that's a very dark brownish ochre. To test yourself, you can go into Photoshop, pull this image in and use your color picker and just click, 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 and you can click and you can start using these as your color palette. And you'll realize that there isn't anything in this image that's 100% bright, you know. So anyway, this is a great source for um, inspiration. I think I just literally just looked up Pinterest culture. And there's some stuff that's like brand new and I found that was kind of cheesy. But I tried to go for the, the stuff that I felt, to me, felt authentic. You know, look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it just has this rich, you know, sense of quality to it. And, of course, there's there's a, you know, there, there's so many cultures out there. You know, there's so many to, to learn from. So, anyway, this was an entire Pinterest. And I ended up printing out all of these images, which is very obsessive. I have to, you know apologize for doing that but I was so obsessed I couldn't help myself look at these two images the contrast between the bright rich red and blue and the dark rich browns and how different the two are both equally incredible but there's a there's a, a tastefulness in in the choices uh, basically the whole page but there's a tastefulness in the choices there's no way I'm going to be able to sit down and explain to you why each color is chosen. You know, I, I don't I don't claim to be an expert again, but I guarantee if you look at this and you use this, your color is going to get a lot better. You look at this and you start using this, your color is going to get a lot better. OK, so I always say this to my students, um, look at culture for color. Just look <laughs> at this. The different um, shades of gold. It's, I mean, it's exquisite. You know, it doesn't look like some cheap thing you'd buy at the dollar store, right? This looks like it cost a million dollars. It's so authentic. It's something that it feels like it's in a museum. You know, if you go to the shopping mall nowadays, it's very brand new and very cheesy, and you know, it has this kind of cheap you know, two for a dollar type of vibe, where this stuff feels so authentic and, and valuable and, and real and truthful. Okay, so anyway, uh, I'll just kind of scroll through my collection here, which I'm very excited about. Oh my God. You know, I would never, I would never think of using these colors, you know? This rich, muted um, maroon color with that dark, dark, dark blue. You know, no yellows in the picture, no greens. And it just has this weight to it. Weight to color. So, um, and I guess I do have a passion for this. And that's why a lot of the freelance work I do is based in color. Um, but I go to, I go to culture all the time, and a lot of times I have to be perfectly honest with you. It's it's subconscious now. I've looked at it so much that I tend to gravitate towards cultural color schemes that are just literally in my subconscious now. But I can I can feel like going back and getting into this stuff is going to be um, is going to take my work to the next level. I do a lot of digital art, and you know digital art. 3D can be really cheesy looking, right? So how do we bring it down? How do we bring it back down to earth so that it feels real and has a sense of weight and believability and tastefulness and go back to um, the world of culture? Um, oh my God, look at this one. So, um, oh, it's beautiful. So yeah, I, I used to collect cultural books and stuff like that. But the quality of photography that they have now is, you know, a hundred times better. So I was looking at this stuff and I was almost crying. It was so beautiful. 
Um, and then I started printing it out, and the printing quality, you, know, you bring it to Kinko's or something or whatever and print it out, and the printing is really good. So she's wearing white. There's no color at all, right? And yet you have this rich red hair, a tiny, tiny hint of green, and a tiny, tiny bit of yellow in the background. It's just exquisite. It's exquisite. Um, there's also uh, light and shadow. You can do the same thing. Look at classic photography, classic black and white photography. And you can start learning about storytelling through light. Um, yeah, you can you can take a, a still life and spend six hours rendering it and, and get all the cast shadows right. But that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the artistic side of light and shadow. Okay, so that's another thing you can do. You can research um, classic uh, photography for getting into light and shadow. Okay, so anyway, that's my spiel. Um, let me poke around and see what other colors. There's another artist that I really like. Um, that has a really interesting use of color. Um, let's see. I just saw it a minute ago. This person right here. Now this person, again, is working their graphics, right? They're understanding the relationship between uh, single, uh, simple shapes and graphics to make something feel colorful. Right, so they understood and worked their color in their black and white. Probably for I don't know how long. I haven't talked to this person, but I'm assuming they spent quite a bit of time developing their black and white. Okay, so here is that same person's color, which I think is just as unique as their black and white. Look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? How do you think of that? I don't know. I would go back to culture, but also the fact that this person is working their design. Okay, so we have a design situation. We have this kind of pale yellow for quite a bit of the imagery. Then we have this intense red and just a hint of intense blue. Just a hint, you know, to give it that contrast. It's not like 50% red, 50% blue, 50% yellow. It's not. The percentages are very unique and very wild, okay? Now you might not like this color, and it would be it would be wrong for me to say, okay, I want everyone to look at at this artist because it might not be your cup of tea. I personally love it, and it's very bold and it's very um, more brave than the color that I tend to use. So when I want to think outside the box, I might look at this person uh, for color. Look at that. Now we look at this and it's it's color. It's the world of color, right? Yeah, it's drawn and it's a beautiful drawing, but the color is the main show. Okay, there isn't even any black line or anything. It's all color. And the fact that they use black for the hands and the head is such a strange choice to me. And yet it works beautifully. Now, I might not understand this, and I'd be like, I don't know what, the, what they did, but if I started experimenting with this color scheme, you start learning from it, and the stuff that you learn, is, it's very hard to put into words. And, you know, we don't have to put it into words. You just look at it, and you, you play with it, and you absorb it. Um, there, again, there are color theory classes, but color theory isn't going to give you color taste. It's just going to say, oh yeah, if you mix red and green, you've got gray. Here's the color wheel. Let's copy the color wheel for 12, you know, 12 weeks. Copying the color wheel isn't going to give you this. You know, isn't going to give you a tasteful, beautiful sense of color. So we all have color ch um, uh, choices that we make. Every day we wake up in the morning and we say, I want to wear the red shirt today. Or I go to the store and I buy a particular piece of clothing, you know, or I put a poster on my wall that's in color. Uh, so we have, we make choices, aesthetic choices every day. So when you start getting into, let's say, Pinterest or whatever, buying books, um, keep in the back of your mind that if you want to learn color or you want to start exploring color, start gathering images that you love the color. You're like, oh, God, I just love the color in here, right? 
that's going to at least start planting the seed in your mind uh, for your future in color. Now, for me personally, I tend to like very muted, you know, gray type of colors and stuff like that. So, so that's me, but that does not have to be you. Um, let me just pick one more. I'm trying not to pick something that I've already shown you before. Let's just pick James Jean again. I have 15 images of James Jean. Um, he has a very unusual uh, color palette that changes from day to day. You know, he's very unpredictable with his color. Let's just say something as simple as this. Complicated drawing, but it's just basically like a greenish red, I'm sorry, a greenish blue line, and kind of like a magenta line. And that's it. That's that's the whole image. But it's a beautiful color piece. And the fact that if you look at it, here's white, and this is kind of like a yellowish, almost like masking tape color. So that's important too, that you tint your white so it's so it creates something tasteful as well. So something like this could be considered um, an interesting use of color. Let's see what else we have. Even this, this looks like some kind of Batman type of thing. All right. But it's not your typical bright Batman colors, okay? So anyway, so that's about it. Um, I have one more folder in my Facebook I'm going to pull up, which is uh, which is me gathering images from films, which have a great sense of color. So I'll put that up right about now. So this is uh, an album I put together on my Facebook a while ago. This is a film design class that I taught when I was in Singapore. I also had a chance to teach this at Lucasfilm, you know, so I got a chance to uh, to go to the ranch and all that craziness, but I was actually teaching color at Lucasfilm, it was crazy. Um, this is what we would do, is we would take stills from movies and draw from them. So I ended up just collecting uh, all these things and putting it in a binder. And then uh, one day I decided to just scan them and put them online. Um, so this is uh, uh, some shots from Lawrence of Arabia. Let's see if we can enlarge it a little bit. Okay. So anyway, um, there's ways of, of grabbing frames from a movie. Supposedly it's, you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, copyright issues or whatever. But if you, I'm sure if you're just copying them to study them for yourself, it's up to you. Um, but anyway, if you do want to um, grab images from a, uh, you know, from let's say a Macintosh, um, if you get a VLC player, which is free, they have a frame grab, and you can just start grabbing images from movies, you can study them. I'm not advising it or condemning it, but that's how you can do it. So anyway, this is Lawrence of Arabia. You can see the colors that are going on here. And what I like about it is when you see a whole section of a movie, you can kind of see it more abstractly. You're not sucked into the movie. You kind of step back and see the, uh, the overall color scheme. Here's another one from Lawrence of Arabia. Again, very muted colors. And then we have these little bits of, of uh, red and blue for the flags. Okay. Here's another one. This one's all blue, no red. And a lot of uh, um, film design has to do with what you take away, what colors don't you use, and that's what makes it strong. This is uh, Moulin Rouge. Again, some beautiful colors. I mean, I love the colors in Moulin Rouge. Look at that. Intense. You've got pink and red. Uh, yeah, pink, pink and red. Pink and blue in the same shot. It's very intense, but you notice when they get into their pink and blue, there's no yellows in here. It's a very um, uh, intense, intense uh, color choices in that movie. This is Fantasia. So if you look at Fantasia, you notice there's no reds in this scene. It's very blue and somber until this one moment where this red face leaps out at the screen. 
And again, the studying that I did to get in, to get involved in all that is what led to me doing visual development at Disney and then teaching uh, at Lucasfilm because I was so passionate about this stuff. And they were just like, absorbed me like a sponge. Yeah, tell me more, Mahoney, tell me more. Um, again, beautiful sense of color, right? Black and blue. You know, you're not you're not throwing every color in the rainbow or in the rainbow at every frame. It's very tastefully, slowly brought in. You've got these, and it's very intense. It's blues and blacks, and all of a sudden, ding! The music goes up, and the yellow comes in. This is, uh, and I sometimes I give people a chance to you know, wonder what it is because it's so graphic. This is Bambi, right? You think of Bambi, you think of these bright colors, and it's not. It's these dark, muted silhouettes for a lot of it. It's very naturalistic color. It's not bright reds, blues, greens, you know? Um, so when you start, except for this, this is also Bambi. This is incredible. This is Bambi. This is the, uh, you know, April shower scene. And then this is also Bambi. Isn't that incredible? How you can keep the colors muted, and then at that certain moment where the two deer are fighting, then the colors come up, and it creates this intense situation. So it's when you choose to give people those intense colors, it's like um, it's like you're a musician. You don't just hit that high pitched note in every single uh, section of your song. There's low, somber moments, and then there's intense moments. This is uh, Sleeping Beauty. It's incredible. See, again, everything is based on just the yellow and just a tiny bit of green and the black for that sequence. And I didn't, I didn't modify these colors at all. I didn't bring them into Photoshop. This is exactly, and of course, this isn't the best um, representation. I'm sure now if I can pull it from Blu-ray. But still, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is Yellow Submarine. So now we've got a different situation. This is why I can't tell you guys do this color because there's so many different ways to do beautiful color. This one I would like to actually redo um, just because this is taken from a VHS copy. I would love to get it, get some stills based on a really good um, copy, which I can do. The problem is with this type of stuff is you get addicted to it and you end up with 40 binders full of um, movie stills and then what happens is you get really good at color then they hire you and you work on all these big movies what a drag nobody wants to do that right um, anyway this was Conan the Destroyer very intense opening sequence just red and black we know what mood you know this is not happy this is terrifying um, this is some sick some scenes from the documentary visions of light which is the best, if you're interested in getting into color and photography, I highly recommend um, purchasing this DVD. I think if it's available, I'm sorry, if it's not, wait for it to come out. I have it on Laserdisc. Um, but it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, I was going to show you some stuff from Visions of Light. I just couldn't find it. Anyway, this is... Uh, some of the most impactful scenes from any movie, this is Gone with the Wind. This is when Atlanta's burning down and the passion between these two characters and it's just it's just all red. <laughs> this is some black and white, incredible uh, graphic design from uh, Othello. Night of the Hunter. This is some more scenes from the, the documentary Visions of Light. Blade Runner, that's not the best. I, I want to get some better frames from Blade Runner. Grand Theft Auto? No, I'm sorry. This is Sal Bass. It's called Grand Prix. Grand Prix, not Grand Theft Auto. This, Look at this. This is not necessarily for color, although the color is kind of cool. But just uh, using different aspects of uh, a racing car to show the graphics of the design. So anyway, I don't want to get off, I don't want to separate myself from, uh, from the um, conversation of color. So let's stop right here. So this is Alien 3. Now, I love the look of Alien 3. I remember when Alien 3 came out, people were like, oh, that movie sucks. 
what a piece of crap. Um, but I said, I really like the director. I think he's really good. And like, dude, what are you talking about? And then the next movie I think he did was Seven, <laughs> which was this incredibly uh, world-renowned masterpiece. But I saw his genius back when he did Alien 3, personally. Anyway, I predicted David Fincher's career. Um, so anyway, I hopefully this gives you some some ideas of places to go to start gathering color that you really like. You might not know, but once you start thinking, oh yeah, I like this movie, I like that scene in this and this movie, or this animation has this color, right? So that's part of it. And then you start looking at classic um, culture, and you start developing a, a sense of color, okay? Um, Okay, actually, I can do one more thing. Let's do a new window. So this is, again, some of the work that I've been doing. And a lot of it is, again, still based on classic um, culture. You know, the muted browns, you know, the intense reds. All this stuff that I'm, I'm working with, I have to thank my teacher for dragging me to the museum to look at uh, culture. You know, all this type of stuff, all the stuff that I'm doing was all learned and absorbed from uh, looking at, at classic culture. Um, one more thing, I'll just go quickly, because I know I've shown you this before, but now I want to relate it to what we're talking about, which is um, color. Right? This is more, again, this is stuff I was doing at Disney. You know, now you can see, hopefully, at the end of the lecture, where I get all my colors from. You know, it's all it's taking it from those uh, those ancient cultures. You know, it's all there. You know, not that I not that I think this is as good. It's not, but but that's the direction. Um, that's the the place that I went to grab this stuff. So anyway, um, that's the lecture on color. Um, you you need to be proactive with this. You need to start gathering material. I, I like Pinterest because you can organize it, but you can print out materials. You can buy books. You can go to the museums in your area and start drawing. And, and hopefully, if they allow you to bring in a little watercolor set or something or or something like that, and start drawing from ancient cultures. Um, nature is great, but nature is kind of you can't, I can't, it's hard to tell what to do with nature. It's just nature, you know. Um, but plein air painting, going out and, and painting out in the real world is, is fantastic. But to learn how to use color, I'll say it again, culture. Culture is the key. Okay? There you go. Thanks for listening.